hi everyone it's been a while since i haven't uploaded newer videos sorry for that as i was doing some other projects and exam preparation let's start today's topic is sockets and its related classes according to official documentation of java socket is one endpoint of two way communication link between two programs running on the network means socket is like door of the house don't get confused between sockets and port port is like house number and socket is like door of that house there are two types or kinds of socket one is for server and other one is for client server has a socket that is bound to a particular port number server just waits and listening to the socket for a client to make a connection request it is like someone in the house waiting for the door to be knocked on the other end client knows host name and port number of the server with this information client makes a connection request client also needs to identify itself to the server so it binds to a local port that it will use during this connection now the connection with server is established through the port that is listening but the problem with this is that it cannot serve newer request so to overcome this server finds another free local port and use this port to make a connection to the client and previous port can continue to listen or wait for other client request let us understand about tcp and udp tcp stands for transmission control protocol if you are aware of web networking concepts then you knew it tcp and udp both works at transport layer protocol if you don't then simply understand that tcp provides several services such as reliability packets will be delivered in order retransmission if packets are lost in midway packets are simply collection of control information and user data next one is udp udp stands for user datagram protocol it is faster than tcp as it is unreliable and no retransmission of packets in udp if something went wrong in java for tcp on the server side we have a class called server socket and on the other side known as client side we have socket class for the tcp connection but before understanding each one we will see what is socket programming socket programming is a term used to communicate with multiple devices across the network socket class it resides in java.net package so in order to use it you will need to import java.net package this class creates a socket constructors of socket class first one is socket arguments are inet address and integer port and you will need to handle io exception this constructor attempts to connect to the server specified by inet address object and port number inet address is used to represent ip address if you want to know more about how to create inet address object or what are their methods then you can check out my first video of advanced java second constructor is socket arguments are string host and integer port and you will need to handle unknown host exception and io exception unknown host exception is thrown if string host name cannot be resolved this is same as the previous one only difference is that server details are specified as string instead of inet address object third constructor is socket arguments are inet address address integer port inet address local address inet address local port and you will need to handle io exception first two arguments are same as the previous one local address and local port are used to specify client's ip address and port that will connect to the server fourth one is socket arguments are string host integer port inet address local address integer local port and you will need to handle unknown host exception and io exception this is again the same as the previous one 
only difference is the string argument socket this will create an unconnected socket that's why connect method is used to specify server we will understand methods directly by an example I have already written the code so that I will more focus on explaining the code rather than writing it this is the client side program as we know socket constructors might throw unknown host exception and IO exception depending on the constructor which we have used so we will need to enclose every socket statement in try block followed by a couple of catch blocks first one is for unknown host exception and second one is for IO exception let's start by first statement in try block this statement will create an inet address object called local pointing to the local machines data such as IP address inet address resides in java.net package Second statement will create a socket called client pointing to the local machine and port number is 1300. In this example, our local machine act as both socket client class and server. resides in java.net package. Here you can see then methods. First method is get inet address. This method will return an inet address object containing information about server such as IP address then the second method get local port this method will return port of the client side that is bound to a server as integer value then third and most important method get input stream this method will return an input stream object using which we can read from the socket Here we converted input stream to data input stream so that we can read easily. Then fourth method of socket class is get output stream. This method will return an output stream object using which we can write to the socket. Here you can see we converted output stream object into print stream and print print stream has method called println using which we can write to the socket and this is the data input stream object and its method is read line to read a line from the socket last method of socket class is close using this method we can close the socket now let us see different different constructors of socket class by an example in this statement we used a string to specify host name in this statement focus on the port number 51672 actually 0 to 1023 are reserved ports you cannot use them because they might not free we can use between 1024 to 65535 here we specified local address and local port of client that will bind to the server in this statement a string is used to specify the host name last one is a bit tricky because it specifies an unconnected socket and later on with connect method we can specify server details this will create unconnected socket then we need socket address object that doesn't attach with any protocol and socket address subclasses provide any specific protocol I need socket address is it subclass then connect method it will take socket address object and a timeout for the socket in millisecond and this will set 10 minutes timeout 
in the next video we will see an example of server socket and how our client program will connect to the server program until then this is Vishnu Pura signing off thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe us please press the bell icon for latest updates goodbye